all, welcome to Garden Invaders from the very historic town of Nottingham. What a beautiful place. Lovely. Full of legends. What's that then? Brian Clough, for instance. <laughs> And lace making obviously goes on here as obviously. well. Obviously. And that amazing character, Mr. Robin Hood. Ah, uh, Okay, yes. and we have a lot in common, thank you, with Mr. Robin Hood because he stole from the rich to give to the poor. We do that in a kind of horticultural sense. Because we give a design and some materials to people who haven't got anything like that. Exactly right. So, but of course, they'll only get some plants if they answer your gardening questions. They will, and of course, we have our very own band of merry men. Over there, our merry men. <laughs> Lovely, excellent. So, you've got a design? I have. What are we waiting for? Today, our two maid Marians are Andrea Thomas, who lives here, and her best friend and work colleague, Claire Barrows. The two of them are inseparable and do an awful lot of partying. Their garden, though, is a complete tip and they can't make best use of it. So we're here to help two damsels in distress. The first thing I have to say about your garden is the fact that I do need to mow my sunglasses when I turn around like that. <laughs> what have you done to the wall? I painted it. <laughs> no, it's a very bright colour. Is that, is that something about your personality? Um, I don't know. Well, I am yes. very bright. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you say so yourself. You're also quite good at DIY in a way. Well, demolition, well, actually. N well, mm, uh, there were some sheds here that took up half the garden that um, I took down last year. So, it's quite a nice garden. Because you are quite kind of sheltered it's in It's a wall garden, mm. isn't it? I yeah. mean, you've got, it's got a lot of structure and it feels like a real extension to the house. I think we should make a bit of a room thing going on here. It's nice that you've made a bit of an effort over there because you have got a few plants. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. sweet peas, which are nice against the wall. Yeah. And uh, carnations and petunias. Not sure quite what we'll do with those. All right. But I'm sure we'll think of something. All right, so mm. what would you use the garden for? Um, topping up my tan and um, holding wild parties. Socialising. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So it's got to be useful for that, Andy. You can do that, though. I can do that. You can have somewhere to sit, somewhere to sunbathe, yeah. somewhere to enjoy yourself. Make Entertain. Make it a bit private, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, one of you has to do the gardening, or one of you has to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Who's doing what? Claire's gardening and I'm answering questions. Well, it seems like you're the boss around here. You're the one who wears the trousers. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> The garden's here, the questions are out the front. You mm. come with me this way and, and Claire, you stay with Uncle you come Andrew. With me over here. You stay with Uncle Andrew and look after him. So, we've got quite a lot of work to do here clearing Absolutely, it all. Absolutely, yes. Thanks, Marion. And then uh, here's the plan. So, this is what we're going to be doing. Right. We're going to put in a path that leads out from the house to actually get up to this area. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a ceramic tile. And then we're going to put in an area of decking here. So this is going to be the sunbathing area, the entertaining area. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a bit of a built-in seat here as well, because you've got to be able to come out and Oh, sit that would down be nice, yeah, yeah. It's not all about hard work, this yeah. garden. And then over in the back, got to get to the shed as well, a bit more paving there. And then plenty of planting throughout as well. And maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of sculpture as well. Right, that sounds fine. Yeah. Minimalistic, Good. yeah, low maintenance. Very low She'll maintenance. She'll love that, yeah. Excellent. Right, well, you're going to be an invader for the day, yeah. so you have to wear this fantastic T-shirt. Oh, thank Thanks, you. Ryan. Yeah. But the first thing we've got to do is start clearing this garden. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Your neighbour's garden, looking absolutely beautiful. You come down here, down to the bottom, you get a perfect view from the bottom here. There you go, <laughs> lovely jubbly. Excellent. It's a beautiful garden, very nice, very kind of them to lend it to us. <laughs> but all your plants are in here as well, spread out across the lawn in groups. Right. Your job is to get all these plants into your back garden. It's as simple as that. So a nice mixed bag of all the kind of ingredients you need for the perfect garden. Also though, over there, that rather, rather contemporary funky little Barbie. Wow, that's nice. Okay, now that's not down to you. That's gonna be down to Claire. Right. Okay, right at the end of the programme, she gets the question right, you get all the goodies, all the pink stuff and all the rest. All the girly, 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 girly stuff. Okay? Yeah. Concentrate on plants. Concentrate first on that group over there, the grasses. Stiper gigantea or golden oat grass, but it is sometimes called giant oat grass. These are only babies at the moment, but they will become enormous. Miscanthus sinensis kleiner cebuspine. Miscanthus gets its name from the Greek word miskos, meaning stalk, and anthos, meaning flowers, referring to the stalked spikelets. And Miscanthus sinensis strictus is a clumping grass with a stiff, upright growing habit. Pinkish flowers appear in October. It's a very showy grass and makes a striking specimen plant. Now, 
You like your grasses? I love my grasses. OK, and some of those little ones down the front mm. get massive. Oh, really? OK, we're talking up here somewhere. Oh, excellent. So they look really, really good. OK, you can mm -hmm. hide in them in the garden at your parties. <laughs> Here's your question. Good luck. All right, thank you. What's the world's tallest tree? Is it the cedar, is it the redwood, or is it the oak? I think it's the redwood. That's your answer? That's my answer. The redwood. Oh. Quite big, because can, they make tunnels through the trunks you can drive cars through. It's the Canadian but are, redwood. But are they tall? That's the thing. Are they tall? They are. It's a great answer! <laughs> Very good, well done, excellent. See, pressure's off now. Oh, fantastic. You have your first group of plants. They'll be going across the rather busy roads. They do take care when you cross the road. <laughs> All right? Invader will come and fetch them. Oh, excellent. There's an awful lot of concrete in this garden, but instead of ripping it all up, we're going to reuse as much of it as we can as a base for a path. So we're just going to lay some tiles on top of that, and that's going to lead into the heart of the garden, where we're going to have another step up, and that's going to be onto a decked area, which is going to be a real sun trap and a fantastic place to sit and relax and entertain. Over in the corner, Claire's digging out for a bit of block paving there that's going to lead into the storage shed at the back, but it's also quite a crucial part of the design, which is all interlocking squares. And then finally, over in this part of the garden, we're going to wrap a glass block bench round the edge of the deck and that's going to be a fantastic place to sit and enjoy the garden. So what's life like in Nottingham? Because you came down from Manchester originally, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, Good? it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah, great nightlife. Um, loads of things going on all the time. Fantastic. Good social life? Yeah, very good. Mm, so no regrets then about coming down to nothing. Not at all, not at all. Fantastica. And you'll be able to hold some parties in your back garden, hopefully, hopefully. by tomorrow. Hopefully, yeah. Tonight. <laughs> oh, that soon? <laughs> yeah. I'm already planning. I like that. Mm. A girl who thinks ahead. <laughs> Next group of plants up for grabs are those down there, a lovely group of perennials. Crocosmia lucifer is a hardy perennial with sword-shaped bright green leaves and tall arching stems of tubular-shaped flowers from late summer to early autumn. Lucifer's flowers are flame red and absolutely stunning. Porovskia little spire is Russian sage. It's a Mediterranean plant from the sage family. It has many culinary uses. Tea made from sage leaves is said to be good for the digestion. A stronger brew can be used as a gargle for sore throats. Verbena bonariensis was the first of many South American verbenas to make it over to England. They were grown in 1726 in the Eltham Gardens of James and William Sherard who obtained the very first seeds from a dried specimen sent from Buenos Aires. Very nice indeed, those plants. Yeah. OK. Here's your question. Good luck. All right, thank you. What colour are the springtime flowers of the shrub Forsythia? Are they yellow, purple or white? Um, yellow. Why do you say yellow? Bit of a wild guess, I'm afraid. Correct answer. <laughs> good, isn't she? Very good. Very good. Incredible. <laughs> They're going in the garden too. Yes, Paul is coming over to fetch them. People get a little bit paranoid about ivy damaging walls because they think that these little aerial roots will get into the brickwork, but the fact of the matter is that if the pointing is sound, then the wall's going to be protected by the ivy and the elements, the wind and the rain, won't damage it. One of the reasons I've decided to use decking in this garden is because there's an awful lot of concrete here. And rather than break it all out and chuck it all in the skip, the great thing about decking is that you can put it down over the top of it and it saves you an awful lot of work. Now, it's raised up off the ground here so it doesn't sit on the wet soil and that's going to make it last an awful lot longer, 25 or 30 years. But there's something over in this part of the garden that's already been here for a lot longer. These Victorian pavers we dug up from the other side of the garden and I thought it would be a good idea just to reuse them because they cost a fortune to buy. It would be a shame to chuck them away. And we've laid them on a sand base that's been compacted. All the ones around the edge have a wet mix of concrete to hold it all together. And then Claire here is just putting kiln-dried sand into all the gaps. You rub it over and then just brush it off. And that, what that does 
is it helps to lock the whole thing together. So that's basically one part of the garden done. We just got to finish the decking. OK, half the plants are now in your garden. Mm -hmm. There's another two questions to go, two more groups of plants. Next are the ones you like the most, aren't they? Yeah. You love these? I do, yes. OK, architectural plants, beautiful. First up, Formium Jester, known to Maori gardeners as Harakiki. Flax was woven into food baskets, plates, bags, ropes, fishing lines and nets, and the sweet nectar from the flowers was a natural source of sugar. Cordyline Australis purpurea, a palm-like tree with narrow purple to bronze leaves. It needs moist soil and shade. It does need some protection in winter. Yucca gloriosa variegata, found originally in North America. The root was used in bread making by the Virginians. The sap is poisonous and the Native Americans dipped their arrowheads in it. Here's your question, good luck. Which flower produces the pain-killing drug morphine? Is it foxglove, allium or poppy? Poppy. I seem very sure about that. Mm -hmm. That's a correct answer. <laughs> very good. They're going in the garden, but I'm taking them, okay? It's my turn to see what they're doing in the garden. Excellent. Okay, what's been going on. When I come back, one more group of plants and then a little DIY project. Are you happy with how things are going at the moment? I am, yes, thank you. Good, chill. See you later. Bye-bye. Right, Mark's coming, get ready. I've been waiting for a long time for this, Andy. <laughs> Let's get our own back Bye, on him. Bye, everyone! It's not big, and it's certainly not <laughs> clever. But it was lots and lots of fun. And that's the main thing. It doesn't set a good example to other children, <laughs> apart from us, either. Anyway, instead of me being your target, yeah. what about finishing this garden? Well, look, we've had a few problems. Come and have a look at this. Why? Look down there. Look at, this. look at the thickness of that concrete. Look at that. Oh, look, your cutter only went that fast, yeah, exactly. We've been breaking loads of concrete out here. It slowed us up a bit, to be honest. But it's all in the preparation, this garden. So it's kind of like the, your classic backyard, isn't it? Everybody fills them with concrete because yeah. they're used for kind of, you know, storing everything in. And then when you want to turn it back into a garden, it's a bit of a nightmare. It is a bit of a nightmare. But we've done all that now. All right, so you've done a decking. Yep. That's nice. Bit of a step up there, if you don't mind me saying. But that's because you haven't come along the path, which isn't quite finished yet. So we're having a path down the side there. Oh, uh, right, yeah. And then you. we're dividing the garden up and we're going to have a wall across there so it keeps this area a bit more right, nice. Yeah. Crack on, Andy. All right, Claire, my darling. All right. How Hi. are you? I'm all right. Oh, you, you stood on my... What? My fork. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't want to stop your digging or anything. I know. But they're working me really hard. So what do you think? I think it's looking good. You know, we're going to see the bigger picture later. How mad is your friend Andrea? She is very mad, actually. She's bonkers. Yeah, she's, cra well, she's one crazy lady. So we can be quite wild in here in terms of design as well, and she's going to love it, is she? Yes, she is. As long as it ends up being so very minimalistic, she works full-time and she's got a little dog, so she doesn't want to be able to have to tend to lots of garden and stuff, which this is looking, it's looking good, yeah. All right, excellent. Well, you carry on digging. Thank you. All right. Don't keep that on too long, though. No. Ah, oh, look at you. It's like being at school, isn't it? Yeah. Sitting on the bench waiting for the next question. Mm -hmm. Can you hear that noise? Yeah. What do you think that is? I think that's probably something in my garden. Yeah. Any ideas what kind of tool that might be? Um, I don't know. No. Concrete cutter. No, Ryan. That's the tool it is. <laughs> to be honest, it's Ryan with a stone cutter. Now, when you knock down your sheds, mm. you could have taken the concrete bases up. Probably, yes. Why didn't you? Too much like hard work. That's exactly what they're finding now. Really? Mm. Oh dear. They're struggling. Are they? Do you know how it's deep, this deep, the concrete? Is it? Yeah. But anyway, don't let that bother you. <laughs> it's their problem. Oh dear. You need to get more plants. All okay? right, yeah. All right, I told you that's your job. Yep. And the last group down there are some shade lovers. Right. Fatsia japonica, often grown as a foliage house plant for cool positions. It's also a very successful shade tolerant garden plant. Hosta dorset. The hosta is a perennial plant, which means that only its above ground parts die in the winter, but the underground parts remain alive, causing it to grow back in the springtime. Ostrich fern. In Elizabethan times, it was believed that carrying fern seeds could make you invisible. It was believed that ferns could affect the weather. Pulling up ferns could cause a storm, and burning them could bring rain. Right, to get them, here you go. Here's your question. Right. right. I have here the leaves mm -hmm. from three plants. Right. OK, I'll tell you what the three plants are, but you've got to tell me which one's which. All oh, right, yeah. OK, we've got laurel, privet and yew. 
right? Not, not you. Uh, <laughs> as or in or you. a sheep. Right, you. Okay, as in Y-E-W. Right. Which one's which? Um, right then. Uh, Laurel, Privet and you. Oh, um... I think I am going to go... That's the Privet. Laurel and you. Took a while to get there, didn't it? It did, I'm sorry. And it's completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shouldn't well. laugh. No. Which is a bit sad you haven't got those plants, but you know. It is because they were my favourites. I know, but you can go down the garden centre, but <laughs> okay, you got that one right. Right. That is Laurel. But that is you. Right. And that is Privet. And you should know that. Should I? Because you live in the land of Robin Hood. Ah. And bows were traditionally made out of you. Not me. One of the key features of this garden is this path which Nick's laying down this side of the garden. We've chosen these ceramic tiles because they tie in colour-wise with the wall there. Now it's important here to get a very, very flat base, otherwise it's, they're a nightmare to lay. But if you get a flat base, you just pop them down with a tile adhesive and it's really quite fast. And something else that's incredibly fast is this glass block wall. And it basically comes as a kit, so there's no mixing up concrete or anything like that. You have all these wooden slats here and you basically put the posts in at each end and then just slot the blocks in with a spacer between each another bit of timber across the top there and that's it and it's actually pretty strong we're putting a bench over in the back there as well so we're using the same sort of idea with the glass blocks two walls linked together and then a bit of timber across the top and that'll be a really solid bench Ah, uh, somebody getting married. Sounds like it. Actually, she's one of your neighbours because she came out of that house. Did she? Yeah, a little bit earlier. Into oh, a lovely right. Rolls Royce. Oh, very oh, nice. Mm. Anyway, you can listen to that because it's mm. very appealing. Whilst you're doing your project, terracotta pots down there right. look a bit bland, a bit boring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to smarten them up with a bit of artwork. Right. So we've got some paint there. You can spell pinky paint mm -hmm. for a pinky girly girly. Okay. Right. And then we've got some stencils that you can use. There mm. you are. There's one stencil. I'm not that girly. You don't like the stencils? Not that much. You don't like the stencils? Well, just spray them pink and plant them. All right? OK. <laughs> Stripes it is then. Andrea did warn me that she wore the trousers. Hopefully she'll like Andy's garden design more than my stencil. Or we could be in big trouble. Mark, Andrew. What I'd really, really like... Really, really, really? ..in this garden. Really? Really. Really, OK. It's some kinetic sculpture. We're talking moving sculpture. Yeah, something that's going to wobble around a bit. All right. Now, I know what you're saying. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Use these and put something on them then? Yeah, so we've got lots of these metal rods. Oh, I've got them, yeah. I thought you could chop them down yeah. and put some of these cobbles on the end because we've got more of these and you can shake a sticker. All right, OK. So tell us, um, like, how many are we talking? The whole lot, all this lot? 40, about 40 or what? Something, something like that. It's not a very big garden. Andy clearly doesn't think that drilling 40 pebbles is enough to keep a man of my considerable talents occupied, so he's asked me to make an outdoor mirror as well. Who's a pretty boy then? I want this garden to feel like an outdoor room, so Mark's knocked up this mirror and we're going to fix it onto the wall here and it should make it feel a bit bigger as well because of the way it reflects the light. But this wall that we're hanging on is a really important asset of the garden and we've got to look after it. But some of it is really quite crumbly. There's lots of mess on here that needs to come off. So what I'm going to do is give it a bit of a wire brush, get all the loose stuff off and chip off any of the big lumps with a hammer and bolster like this. Get those off. And when it's all done, it needs to have a water sealant, a repellent on there. So what you do pour some into a bucket like that and then you need to put it on quite liberally so it soaks in and what that will do it'll stop water from penetrating the brick and it'll stop it from getting frozen because when it freezes it all expands and it all becomes loose and falls apart so that will protect that wall for years and years excuse me love just got to clear up this rubbish thank you could you please move that out of the way <laughs> It's not rubbish. It's not rubbish, Marky. 
it's not. <laughs> it's not. I've it been is. working hard all afternoon no, honestly, on this. No, you're absolutely right. It's not rubbish, but tacky still. It is, rather, yeah. But not in taste, but in sort of paint drying yeah. form. It's mm -hmm. not tacky at all in taste. It's very nice. And I like the fact that you've used the same paint that you've had on the walls for the other bands. Yeah. Do you know they remind me? You know those old fashioned milk jugs you get? Oh, yeah. You know that you have on yeah. your breakfast table, kind yeah. of a Blue contemporary, and white ones. yeah, contemporary mm. version of those. Very nice. You can pop indoors now. You're done. Excellent. All right? But we haven't finished the garden yet, and I haven't even finished building you Ooh. a little present. Excellent. Okay. All right. So pop inside. I'll come and get you in the garden's done. Excellent. All right. I'll take. Go on then. Go, go on then. Go, go. It's always loitering. <laughs> Procosmia lucifer has these stunning ready orange flowers, but its other major asset is the fresh green leaves. You just chop it down in the autumn and it'll shoot up again in the spring. Russian sage has a haze of purpley blue flowers above silvery grey foliage. Give it a sunny spot and a well-drained soil and it'll look absolutely incredible. Miscantha sinensis gracilimus. This grass does eventually flower at the end of the autumn, but that's not what you want to grow it for. It's five foot of elegant, graceful leaves that waft around in the breeze. Amazing. I tell you what, making your own artwork for the garden is absolutely brilliant fun. Thanks very much. Because you can personalize the garden with things that you might not put in your house. This is very, very simple. All we've got is these metal rods. They're about six mil diameter. Cut them off with some bolt cutters. Then on the underside of these stones, just drill them out with a masonry drill, glue them in place with some bonding resin, and then drill some holes in a piece of six by two on a bit of a curb, you can do what you like, and you end up with something that looks very dramatic and sounds gorgeous. Time for the big woofer? Yep. Okay, this is the big question. Yep, right. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You look a bit frightened to me. I am frightened, but I'm ready. <laughs> I'm frightening you. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Please, I don't want to frighten you. Right. But it is very important, okay, because if you get this question right, you get all the goodies down here. The barbecue, which is the most trendy looking barbecue I've seen in a good long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, plus everything else here. The rather lovely girly gardening tools. Cushions, the whole works. It's all pinky and bluey and lovely. Okay? Very nice. Now, Andrea has said that this is very important. Yep. Okay. And if I don't get it, what's she going to do to me? I don't think I could repeat that. All right then. To be fair. So here's your question. Right. Good luck. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, you ready? Don't be frightened. From which cereal plant do you get corn on the cob? Is it maize, wheat, or barley? I'm going to go for maize. And the only reason being it's yellow. It's a correct answer. Yes! yes! Hurrah! Are you good or what, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Very good indeed. Thank I'm you very, very much. pleased with you. Andrea is going to be over the moon. Yes. All right? <laughs> Excellent. You can, have, you can have pop inside. Thank you. All right. And then I'll come and get you and Andrea when the garden's sorted out. Fantastic. Right, yeah. Off. Well done. Off you go. Thank you. Lovely job. I'm very, very pleased about that. You need to describe for us what your garden looked like about, it's been a long one this, about uh, 10 hours ago. Um, there was some sweet peas, well, I don't really know where I am, but I think over there. Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> over there, there was some concrete there. Um, there was, um, and then I had some black stuff on the, some, because I didn't want any weeds to grow. Attractive? Um, no, not at all. Useful? No. Have a look at it now. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god! Isn't it great? It's fantastic! And you kept my sweet peas! Well, you know. Oh. That's all you had. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Isn't it brilliant? It's pretty good, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing! <laughs> what about the path? Oh! So you've got a path all the way down there covered now. Oh, wow! 
Great. Oh my. Oh, it's oh, it's just brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> so the path, the decking. Yeah. There's a nice big surface area for hospitality. Yeah. And you can sit on your bench over there, and you can sit on the edge of the decking as well. So it's sort of multi-purpose. Brilliant. Things, really. The glass walls help divide the garden up and let light through, and you also see the plants through it from either side. So yeah. it's the same is true of the seat over there, mm. which is really nice when the plants have grown through it. Wow. And we've got this river of stone that kind of runs through it, and this kind of bizarre sculpture. <laughs> yeah, that was my present to you that I was making my hands dirty. I made you a bizarre yeah, sculpture. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so don't you. call me Gobby no, again. No, I promise I won't do it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Over there, you can see that you have got the barbecue and all the cushions and goodies, courtesy of Claire. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was touch and go, though, I have to say. It was touch and go, whether you were going to get those, but fortunately it worked out. We also made you a mirror right. for the wall. Big right. mirror on the wall over there, which is made out of polished steel. So how similar or different is this to what you had in mind? It's, it's just amazing. <laughs> It's, it's comf I didn't really have any expectations, um, but um, it's just, it is, it's fantastic. What does it mean for you to have this done in one day? You can now party in here, whatever you want. Yeah, I can entertain, I can have a party. Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why waste time? Yeah, uh, and I've got somewhere to sunbathe as well. It's brilliant. Perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you for having us. We've had a great day. Yeah. No, thank you for coming. It's been great. The key to a low maintenance garden is to reduce the amount of open ground and exposed soil. Here, the combination of gravel and garden fabric will make it virtually impossible for weeds to grow. We've also used easy care plants like evergreens and grasses to give Andrea her modern but minimal look. This is a garden she can enjoy without having to worry about its upkeep. See ya. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.